Tom, living so closely with someone is always going to bring its challenges, uh, housemates in particular, when mm. you're renting. And uh, I have to say, this story is a bit of a doozy. It comes from actually an Australian dude living in America right now. Yeah, right. And it's been reported that he's living in a share house with a bunch of people. He's renting. He's kind of just living in America for a little bit. Yeah, sure. However, he wants to come back down under to Australia for a three-month holiday. Right, Probably, okay. You know, visit family Yeah, and exactly. Stuff. Probably to see a bit of family and then also do a bit of extra stuff, just go around a few different states and holiday a little bit. Yeah, So he's not? leaving the American house. However, he has insisted... And it's so weird that this goes along the grapevine. He must have really pissed off his housemates so much that it becomes a, a news story here in Australia. I that mean, it's gone on these forums and websites and stuff like that. Right off the bat, insisted is a strong word to be using. Yeah, yeah. Well, he insisted <laughs> to his housemates that while he's on the three-month holiday, he shouldn't have to pay any of the bills that he's currently obligated to pay. Right, so not paying rent, not paying electricity, water. Yeah, yeah. He literally said to the housemates, he's like, hey, I'm not going to be here. I'm not really using the services, so <laughs> do you guys mind covering covering all the expenses like that? Yeah, the big ones. And I think he said something like, I'll pay for the Wi-Fi. There was, like, there, was, there, was a little bit, there was a little bit where he said, you know, I'll chip in for the smallest amount I can do, the internet. The <laughs> Wi-Fi is free, mate. <laughs> it's been free for ages. Yeah. It's probably some crummy, like, 3G or something, you know, some cheap as uh, that he's insisted to pay for to get off the hook because he doesn't want to pay the big bills, like I said, the electricity, the water, all of that stuff. And his housemates have turned around and said, you're an idiot. We're yeah. not doing that just because you're going on holiday and relaxing, mind you, seeing the sights of Australia doesn't mean you shouldn't have to pay. Look, I mean, maybe there's something in it. Maybe, like, that the bills, like, the water, the electricity and all that, maybe he could pay a subsidised rate of it. But, like, his rent, he still has to pay full board for the rent, right? Otherwise, yeah. you don't live there anymore. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you give up your room if you don't want to pay while you're going away. Definitely. Find someone else to go in. But, yeah, it got a bit of a discussion about it uh, on the internet because a bunch of people have said, you know, he's not using the services he shouldn't have to pay. On the other end, someone said, just because you leave doesn't mean you leave your commitments as well. So he's been in a bit of a hellfire, this guy. What we want to do here is open up the phone lines to you, Adelaide, and give you an opportunity to vent about your housemates. You know, it's a it's a bit of a cost. We're in such a cost of living crisis. I mean, we talk about it all the time. So many people, so many Aussies, so many South Australians are renting, not buying houses because it's so unaffordable to buy a house. We want to know, have you got a terrible housemate? You can stay here completely anonymous if you want, but this is your opportunity, Fresh Fam. And vent about your housemates. Have you got a terrible housemate? We've got to go to Mill over in Glenside. G'day, Mill. How are you, mate? Yeah, how's it going? Good morning, guys. Yeah, good, thanks. Now, have you got a bad housemate, mate? Yeah, well, look, when I first moved into this house, I just noticed everywhere smoked like smoke. Yeah. So, like, um, I said, uh, wait a minute, do you guys smoke in the house? They said, no, only in our bedroom. Yeah. The whole place just stinks of smoke. So, like, uh, we got that rule changed, and um, now they're smoking outside. But um, one housemate, for example, he conveniently goes outside, sits by the back door, yeah, and leaves the back door open. Oh, he leaves the door open. Like, what's the point, yeah. Milt? Why? Like, do they want to listen? It. Do they want to be able to hear the TV going or something at the same time? Yeah, yeah. What? I guess you know, like, uh, just. Stay connected with the other guys in the house, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Once the cool breeze of the air conditioner coming out of the glass door. <laughs> once you once you tell them, hey, you have to shut the door, they come up with another solution. They have a little tunnel that runs yeah, yeah. from outside to inside. Oh, crack a yeah. window. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Smoke like, what he does. <laughs> he still does it. He leaves the door ajar. Uh, well, a tiny crack, but... Mil, you better have a word to him for us, all right? Say, so Tom and Callum said you got to shut oh. the back door, mate. Yeah, yeah, I will. I definitely will. Good Never on close you. The complete. <laughs> Good on Thanks, you, Mil. Thanks for getting involved, mate. Appreciate it. Now, we've got Ty in Flinders Park. Ty, can you tell us what is the uh, issue with the housemate? Hey, uh, so I had a previous housemate, and um, he was, like, really annoying about spacing. So, like, in, like, the fridge and stuff, like, he couldn't have my stuff, like, taking up too much room. Yeah. So, um, a couple of times, I actually caught him, like, mixing our seal together, and it got to the point where he actually mixed our milks in the same bottle. So oh, really? What the hell? Are they different kinds and of milks, like uh, skim and oat? They, 
So one time he had almond mixed with my full cream and he's just done like full cream together and just like, but like different dates and stuff. It's really off putting and stuff like that. But that's criminal. That's insane. You can't trust, you can't trust a milk date that's been a hybrid swapped with another milk date. Oh, you're telling What's me. What's wrong it's with ridiculous. him? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I had to have a word with him about it, but um, yeah, happy I'm out of there now for sure. Yeah. yeah. What, what, what did he say back when you talked about, hey mate, please don't mix our milk again? He, he actually got pretty mad at me. He said, like, you got to understand, like, the spacing in the fridge, like, we need, like, room, and, like, it makes sense to put them together the same thing. Oh. Uh, like, nah, it's not going to work for me. It's not going to work for me. Yeah, yeah. I've, oh, sorry, mate. I put uh, the lasagna with the tikka masala. Hope you don't, yeah. hope you don't oh, mind. I was exactly. just saving space. Tomato-based. Yeah. <laughs> Get on your time. Thanks for getting involved, mate. Hey, Sophie and Devon Park, let's wrap things up. Have you got a bad house, mate? Um, okay, so I was friends with uh, someone who lived with a couple, yeah. and they were that lazy that they ran out of toilet paper one day, so they ended up using a rag, Don't and walk. they would share the rag and use it to wipe their asses with. Oh, sharing it? Went on, yeah, this went on for like three to four weeks until the other housemate that didn't use the toilet was like, what the hell, like, you need to clean this shit up. Um, so yeah, it was just absolute filth. And then a week later, the toilet flooded and the entire house was like flooded with shit water. Wow. wow. Absolute criminal. Crazy. Be up for that. <laughs> Sophie, Sophie, what, what like, uh, are these people using the rags? Are they, with, if you were to see them on the streets, would you just think, oh, they're regular Joes? Are they pretty normal looking I people? Feel like or? They- Stoners slash probably crackheads, to be honest. Oh, like, okay. who, not, no normal person is doing that type of stuff. Like, nah. that's just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, Sophie, has your mate gotten out of that house since? Oh, yeah, well and truly. Well yeah, and truly. Yeah, <laughs> good stuff. And Callum, i got to say, I'm a little bit nervous for this next uh, trending article I'm about to talk about. Yeah, yeah. You've kind of given me a little bit of a debrief. Uh, I haven't heard all of it yet, but the reason you're worried is because... Let's be real, it's a little bit gross. It is scientific, but it's a little bit gross. Yes, it is a little bit gross, uh, but yes, it is. A, it, it, it has a science about it. And, you know, I, find, I think it's quite interesting. And also, I think a lot of people will find it interesting. And if you, if you are going into work as, uh, and you want some, like, fun facts to say, this is definitely it. However, it is a little gross. So if you are eating your breakfast now... Maybe just turn the radio down just a little bit. Just a little bit. Keep us on, obviously. Keep us don't, on. Don't, don't, turn oh, don't, it, don't turn it off completely. Don't you dare, because <laughs> we'll know yeah, and we'll, yeah, we'll we find know. you. We, we sense it, but yeah, obviously this is a fun fact that you could take to the water cooler, and I say the water cooler specifically, not the cafeteria. You will yes. not be wanting to eat with this one. No, no, it no. It is, of course, a bit of toilet, a bit of toilet chat. It's, uh, it is fart related, and that is why it's a little bit gross. So. I guess I want to put you to the test, Tom. We, well, we don't want the fresh fan to be too grossed out. So I'm going to give you a bit of a timer, 20 seconds to pretty much explain the scientific fact so we don't go too long and we don't gross out the fresh fam too much. Okay. All right. Uh, 20, 20 seconds is not a lot of time. Uh, no. <laughs> I don't. I'm keen to see how you blurt out, because it is actually quite scientific and in-depth. I'm keen to see how you blurt out this one in 20 seconds. All right, here we go. 20 seconds on the clock. Let's do it. All right, a TikToker, his name is Dr. Karen. He has recently come out and said, hey, you should not hold in your farts. You should pass wind. The average person passes wind 14 times in a day. If you don't get rid of that gas, it can be absorbed through the lining of your gut and make its way into your bloodstream. From there, it can get into your lungs and then you can be breathing out farts. <laughs> I did. Hey, 20 <laughs> seconds on the dot. Who cares about your thesis? <laughs> All these PhD students studying farts. Do it in 20 seconds. <laughs> One of the worst things about driving is finding a place to park your car. Yep. And it's it's especially tough when you go to a busy shopping center or something like that. And, you know, it's tough to find a park as it is. Mm. You know, people constantly will park like right next to the line or even on the line sometimes. So your car is sort of squished up to the next to theirs if you can even get your car in. I mean, that's the whole trouble. You might see what looks like a good park, but it is deceiving that, mm. you know, someone has crunched in tightly and it's just not worth even trying. I mean, even being on the passenger end, right? 
isn't it the worst thing where you have to like s- some <clears throat> shimmy out of the car? Like you ca- you open the door, the car door just a tiny bit, and you're holding it, and you got to try and squeeze yourself out Dude. without letting your car door hit the other car. <laughs> the one arm on top of the car door, yeah, yeah, yeah. sliding the body out like a snake, you yeah. need a bit of oil on you <laughs> as you get out, and then you have to do the slight shut as you crawl your body out and uh, press it against yourself. Yeah, it's, it's almost horrible. like you got to give yourself five minutes of leeway just to stretch before you get out of the car sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, and it's awful when you know it's coming, when you've parked in there and then you look to your side and you think, geez, I'm going to have to be a worm on this one yeah. and slide out. Well, over in Glebe Hill Shopping Centre in Tasmania, they've figured it out with the car parks, right? Yep. So it's a normal spaced car park, but instead of just the single white line in between each space, what they've done is they've got a double white line Okay. with about... It looks like about a metre and a half of space in between. So no matter how close to the line you park, you're going to have plenty of room to get your door open and, you know, just satisfy all you're getting yeah. out of your car needs, especially if you're trying to put shopping in the car. Yeah, wow. Well, so, yeah, two lines together. Uh, as soon as you put mm. the door out, there's enough space. I think that's genius. And it's one of those ideas where you think, why hasn't it been done already? Yes. And I bet there's so many line painters out there that do that for a living. And surely along along the track at some point, one of them's turned to their mate and said, you know what would be good? Two yeah. lines. Two lines. They've turned around and said, that's crazy. What's better than one line? Yeah, two, two lines. It'll be so good. <laughs> it'll, it'll free up space for your shopping. <laughs> Boss has probably turned around and said, that's insane. We're not doing that. Yeah. Finally, it's come to fruition. So that is a great idea. Thanks to the Tazzies. Now, look, i got to say, I have seen the double-line uh, car park spaces here yeah. in Adelaide. Oh, really? Yeah, but it's almost like the, par- the, the parks are even slimmer. With okay. the, the double lines that I've seen here. like Nothing like what I'm seeing here in Tasmania. They have plenty of space. And I know you're probably thinking, oh, gee, well, it sounds like there's not like there'll be less car parks. It'll mm. be harder yeah. to find a yeah. park. But you know what? I'm okay with that. I'm all right taking a five-minute hike to the shopping centre to if I miss out on one of these it's primo parks. I mean, I guess it's up to you. If in the vicinity they have the double line parks, it's kind of up to you whether you want to, uh, you know, risk having less car parks there or have to do the shimmy out of the car. It's kind of yeah. one or the other. <laughs> and, you know, I think it's a great idea too. The double the double line is good. Yeah, I mean, it's great for, you know, getting your groceries in. I mean, if you have a child, you've got to strap them into the yeah. booster seat. There's nothing worse than having a car right next to you trying to do that, right? And there's no excuse for digging the car next to you, opening up your door and slapping it. So, no. <laughs> you know, if that if you do find a dent on your car now, you know it's malicious. It's not an accident. Now, what I want to do here is open up the text line. Where's the worst car park, Adelaide? Where's the worst car park right here? If I had to pick one, it would definitely be probably Burnside Shopping Center. Burnside? Yeah. Yeah, yeah fair Jeez, enough. there's some tight spaces there. I mean, yeah, we're in Adelaide. There's plenty in the city as well. I mean, look at one of the busy main roads in the city. A lot of tight, cramped spaces there that you have to, you know, go into an alleyway or something to to do a quick park. So, yeah, heaps in the city here. Get thinking, Fresh Fam. What is the worst car park here in Adelaide? A couple of people on the text line letting us know that, hey, the Coles at Victor Harbour has uh, always had this extra space for car parking. Uh, That's coming from a few people, so... Great news for Victor Harbour. Unfortunately, it's a little far to go to get a great car park. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Can you imagine as well? You know how some people get annoyed with when you see a motorbike parked in one of the car park slots? Oh, and don't get like, me geez, started. You've already, you don't take up that much space. Can you imagine someone pulling that move in Tasmania, parking your motorbike in one of the double line parks? You'd be like, you absolute In jerk. between the cars? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> hey, somebody else has texted in here saying, dudes, Adelaide Airport car park sucks. As does the Central Market. Love you both, Jack and Tim. Hey, I feel, Cheers, like, this, Jack and Tim. I feel like the Central Market is going to get a bit of a spin on this one. Uh, someone said, worst car park, Coles Furley. Uh, went fell. To, fell, yeah. Went to do <laughs> shopping. That's a bad one. <laughs> Blunder. Yeah. Uh, went to do shopping one day and came back to my car and someone had scraped the whole side with their car and left no notes. Yeah, no, nah, that's no good. Look, the, the Fell car park is a bit of a troublesome one. It's actually where I learned to drive, though. Yeah, so. right. Holds a special place in my heart. (laughs) Sentimental. (laughs) Plenty more people texting in about the Central Market car park. That's gotten quite a few Mm. people riled up. I've got another text here. Uh, It would have to be Westfield 
Marion car park as the worst. I've been driving around trying to find a car park for upwards of 20 minutes and it almost deters me from going shopping. Yep. Click yep, and collect, definitely. mate. Click and collect. <laughs> There's a way around it. Someone else <laughs> said, definitely the brick works. One way in and one way out. Narrow parks and traffic banks up and blocks the roundabout to get in. True. It is bloody annoying, even if you're just going past the brick works and yep. just trying to go down that street. When that roundabout banks up, it is tough to get through it. Yeah. Plenty. Uh, another cut. <laughs> Another text here. Callum, this is down your way. Uh, you have to let me know if this is a bad one or not. Worst car park is Semaphore Beach on a hot summer day from yep. Dave in Largs Bay. 100%. And if you're from Semaphore or that area, you'll know that all the tourists come in uh, summer and they come over the bridge and it just fills up all the parks. So, yeah, you have to go along the beach and even they fill up pretty quickly. So, yeah, it gets pretty hard. Yeah, no good. Another text here. Hey, lads, an absolute shocker is TTP Shopping Car Park. The amount of laps I've done just to find a park, especially on a Thursday night, is just ridiculous, which is... Crazy to me because TTP is a massive car mm. park. <clears throat> yeah, bit of an illusion there. And uh, we've got this one here, Tom. Love this one. Gawler Green Car Park is a total shambles. <laughs> so many accidents at the entrance. Designed by a man for sure. Love, Amelia. <laughs> <laughs> Had to have a little swipe in. Who hurt you, yeah. Amelia? <laughs> They say sharing is caring, but it doesn't matter what they say. What do you say? I don't care. Brecky with Tom and Callum presents Shut Up and Take My Money on Fresh 92.7. Shut up and take my money, Adelaide. Sponsored by KFC Northfield. Get your lunch and dinner fix. Check out the brand new KFC Northfield today. Jeez, this is our favourite game at the moment, Callum. Not just because it's KFC, but being able to gift other people KFC. Yeah, I mean, we feel like, you know, KFC angels from above dropping it down from the clouds, and what a pleasure to do so because we love KFC just as much as you guys. Yeah, absolutely. And this is an amazing prize, a $100 voucher you could possibly win today right now by playing Split or Steal. Hey, can't wait for this. Uh, Fun little tidbit about KFC. Uh, (laughs) I was looking through a bunch of interesting facts about the organisation. Did you know that KFC is traditionally eaten on Christmas Day in Japan? I did know this, actually. Mm. Yeah, uh, because uh, the colonel went over there, like, way back and made it this thing like that this is what everyone in America does on yeah. Christmas Day. They all KFC. And then it somehow took off in Japan. Well, and so now it's lied. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, he lied through his teeth. <laughs> oh, but yeah, you get up, you you leave a few uh, milk and cookies out for Santa, you open your presents, and then you smash a Zinger burger. Yeah, yeah. That's what happens every time on Christmas. He's still an honourable man, yeah. though. Because <laughs> he brought us the good, dirty birdie. That's it. But, of course, Tom, we do want to play the classic game of split or steal. If you both steal, you don't get anything. If you split and steal... Steal, the stealer gets the prize, and of course, double split gets to half the KFC voucher, which is totaled at a hundred bucks. Yes, and now let's find out who's going to be playing split or steal with us this morning. We've got Renee in Salisbury Park. Renee, good morning. How are you going? Uh, good morning, guys. I'm good. How are you? Very yeah, good. Very well. Now, Renee, how much do you love KFC? I do love KFC, but yeah. I've got to limit myself. <laughs> now, Renee, when's the... Oh, it might be hard to think, but, like, when's the last time you had a bit of KFC? Uh, maybe about a week and a half ago. Yeah, cool. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, yeah. Not that hard. That's a, so, that, I am due. I am due. That is a long enough hiatus to hop back on it, I'd say. That's right. Absolutely. Hey, yeah. Renee, this morning you're going to be playing Split or Steal with Jake in Alberton. Jake, good morning. How are you, mate? Yeah, they are the... The fresh crew. How you going? Very good, Jake. <laughs> yeah, well, mate. Yeah. Hey, Jake, when was the last time you had KFC? Well, you're not going to believe me, but I had it last night and I actually didn't finish it off. So I had smoke this morning. Blasphemy. Ooh, this morning yeah. as well. Hey, <laughs> okay, at least, at least you finished it off this morning. There's, there's still a bit of respect there for you. Yeah, that's right. I'll tell you what as well, Jake. Even though it's been since this morning you had a, I'd still say, long enough hiatus yeah, yeah, to yeah. hop you, back you on You could it. get it for lunch, maybe yeah. dinner. Two days back to back. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Now, you guys both know how this game works? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. All right. Well, Renee, we'll go ladies first. Uh, convince Jake, what are you going to do in your own time? Oh, look, I'm I'm absolutely going to share. Like, we both, you know, deserve it both on the line. We both get something. I'm not greedy. Okay. There you go. All right, Jake, what, yeah. do, what do you think? Uh, well, I just think that everyone's feeling the pinch of the um, inflation lately. And, Renee, I can tell by your voice you're a very nice uh, person. Oh, thank you. 
So I do, I do believe it, and I think you are going to split, and so am I. Yeah, right, I listen. will do. Thank you. Sounds very oh. like a match made in heaven. They do sound like nice people. <laughs> Let's find out, Tom. All right, you're going to hear three, two, one, go, and after go, you're going to say split or still. Are you ready? Yes. Here we go. Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Still. Split. Oh! Oh! Sorry, Jake. Oh, Jake. Renee. Jake will never trust anyone again. Renee, congratulations! But I mean, Thank you. Jake, at least you did get some dirty birdie into you today. Oh, that has broken my heart. Right? <laughs> oh, Jake, you've made me feel bad now. Hey, Renee, maybe you can take I'll Jake out for lunch. For you. <laughs> Throw him, throw him a little wicked wing or something. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'll Re- be thinking of him. Renee, congratulations. A $100 voucher to KFC is Thank coming you. your way. Callum, I've, I've been sitting on something for this whole week now. Yep. Uh, something that happened to me over the weekend, and I wasn't entirely sure how to feel about it. And I, I guess I've just gone to a point now where I thought I lost for the Fresh Fam's opinion on this one. Hey, it's always great to go to the Fresh Fam for the jury. They're very knowledgeable and wise, so mm. if we give a predicament, it's always good to have you know everyone jump on the text line or on the calls and tell you what's what. Basically, I want to know if I got played, Adelaide. Mm. And uh, this stems from over the weekend, I was at a mate's house. You know, We were having a, having a few uh, brewskis in the afternoon, having, yep. chilling in the sun, and... You know, it got to a point where, you know, neither of us could drive responsibly and, you know, we were running out of drinks. So I said, you know what, mate, I can walk up to the bottle oh, it's just up the road and I'll, I'll, I'll get the slog back, you know, and get a carton. Yeah, yeah. He goes, yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. He's like, you know what, if you do that for me, uh, I'll, I'll, shout, I'll, I'll shout the carton. I yeah, said, yeah, yeah. Great awesome. deal. Yeah, I said, yeah, fantastic. I mean, it's maybe like a 200-meter walk, but, you know, with a carton of beer, that can get pretty heavy. It's not the worst thing in the world, but, yeah, I've done the same walk before and had to do the carton, and you're doing the swap seas with people, especially yeah. after a big day in the sun, you know, drinking and stuff. You are sort of tussling around the carton because it gets a bit heavy and stuff like that. Yeah, so, well, I've thought, you beauty, I'll, 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 I'll put in the walk, I'll put in the effort, you know, if he's going to shout. And then... As I'm about to leave, he goes, "Actually, mate, you know, um, I haven't been able, I haven't had a chance to walk my dog today. You know, she would, she would just love it if you could take yeah, her for a yeah. walk. And you know, this is a, this is a big German Shepherd. I'm thinking, oh, I don't, I don't know, man. I've got to, I've got to carry the carton. I don't know. I don't want to be responsible for the dog. He's like, ah, he's, I'll get you the leash. I'll get you the leash. Yeah. So I'm he's like, okay, insisted it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Insisted upon me. So he gets the leash, uh, puts it on the dog, and then I'm like, all right, well, you know, the walk there is all fine. That's no dramas. Can I just say, this is such a funny process to watch from my angle because I was there sitting on a deck chair thinking, poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> very, it, very could be, it, it could have very easily been you. It could have been you know? anyone. Could've it been literally anyone. could have been anyone. He forced his leash on and said, walk my dog. Yes, and so we're walking the dog, get there, you know, get to the sip and save, and the, the blokes at the sip and save were awesome, though. Giving the dog schmackos and stuff. Don't know why they had schmackos, but if one of them had some in his bag. <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> drinking, <laughs> drinking one of the workers, that's his snack. It just, uh, <laughs> it, really, it really is bizarre. Either he's, you know, trying to like make friends with the neighborhood dogs or he's just got a weird appetite. <laughs> yeah, who knows? But hey, the dog was loving it. Yeah, well, that's good. Anyway, you know, get the carton, get the slog back. I've got it up on one shoulder, dog at least in the other. Yeah. I get to a point about halfway mark. I'm like, oh, I need to swap this over. And then it's the awkward thing of trying to get the carton back down on the ground, swap leash hands over, get it back up on the other shoulder. And then we get back there and, you know, it was, there wasn't so much of a thank you or anything for walking the dog. It was more like, yeah, I shouted the carton. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. Cheers for that. There's no verbal thank you. It's yeah, nah. that was pre-established, nah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to open up the text line here, Adelaide. Zero four two eight nine two seven nine two seven. Did I get played? Yeah, I can see why you think you would get played, but I also see the benefit of getting a free carton. Yeah. That the walk is, you know, <laughs> it, it equates to the free carton because it, it is an inconvenient walk. You said you're swapping around the leash. It gets a bit tight on the arms, on the muscles, but I'd say 
$50 card and $50 for the effort to walk dog and get a bit of beer. It's not too bad. Plenty of people getting involved on the text line right now. Somebody's texted in saying, I don't think you got played because free carton and uh, must have been a good boy. <laughs> The dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or maybe you were the good boy doing it. Yeah. <laughs> this one here. I did get a pat on the head yeah, when I got yeah. back. Yeah. <laughs> Smacko, a little bit of a treat. Uh, this one See here. It. <laughs> Someone said, uh, no, nah, your mate was treating you like the help and uh, chucking money at the problem. There yeah. You go. All right. All right. Hey, another text here. <laughs> this one's funny. You're saying you got a $50 free carton. I assume you mean a carton for everyone. You didn't get all 24 of the beers, right? How many did you have? Seven? Yeah, you got played. <laughs> There's a lot of... Uh, I like the deduction in that one. <laughs> no, I had all 24. Yeah. No. Uh, look, yeah, we split the carton down the middle, so about... Uh, well, uh, 12 sounds like a lot. Uh, yeah, but yeah. It was but a it was a day-night session, you know, we were watching the test. Exactly right, though. I do like that kind of thinking, though, that, you know, if you didn't have all the beers, then, yeah, the $50 doesn't equate to the whole thing, does it? Nah, yeah, absolutely not. Hey, let's go to Kiara over in McGill. Kiara, did I get played? You definitely didn't. Um, I'm a German Shepherd lover. If it was me, I would have offered to walk the dog and made someone else get the beers, personally. <laughs> yeah, right, okay. But what if, what if, you, uh, if you made someone else get the beers and you weren't involved in the free beers, would you still have walked the dog? Well, as the other person said, you're not getting the whole carton. So mm. you get to walk the dog, leisurely exercise. Then yeah. you make room for more years and someone else has done the hard work for you. Yeah, okay. So you say you're not really losing out if you get to get your exercise in, you're out in the sun, that's all good. And then uh, a little a little few beers on the extra. Yeah. Yeah, scab off the rest. Oh, I like your thinking, Kiara. Thank you. Thanks for getting involved. Hey, we've actually got our, one of our producers, Henry, on the line. Henry, mate, how are you? Very well, guys. Uh, long time listener, first time caller. Good to chat to you. Very good to chat to you, Henry. <laughs> Tell us. Give us the verdict. Was Tom played? Look, I reckon you've been swindled a little bit, mate, in the sense that German Shepherd, famously a large dog, yeah. uh, case of beer, nice, but not like the biggest reward you could get for doing a little bit of dog walking. So I reckon you've got a medium to small size reward for what is essentially a large task. Okay. I reckon you should have bartered for like a packet of chips or something as well to be thrown in, maybe. Yeah, right. Okay, like a, like a bit of a meat stick or something on yeah. the, for the walk back, get my energy up. Good for you and good for the dog, the meat stick as well. Yeah, yeah, could have shared it. Henry, <laughs> what are, what dog breed would you say equates to this specific reward of a $50 carton? I think you need the dog to be of a size that you can be carrying the case with two hands and the leash around your wrist. And if the dog pulls on the leash, it doesn't risk you dropping the case. So I'm thinking something in like the terrier size, yeah. so like a West Island White Terrier or Jack Russell, yeah, yeah, something yeah, like okay. that. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's a, that's a fair point. Uh, look, I think it's pretty. I think it's pretty even mix here whether I got swindled or not. But uh, I am starting to think I got played. I think. I think whether you got played or not, just uh, rationalise it in your head that at the end of the day you had a cold beer and that's all that matters, right? <laughs> that's it. At the end of the day, I got a cold beer and I got to watch the test. We're all good. <laughs> Not to knock uh, people qualified as dating experts. Obviously, there are qualifications you can have which are proper and everything. Yes. Uh, where you can, you know, you are qualified to do such things, like give counselling and stuff. But there are a few people that are just on TikTok that are claiming they are dating experts. Yeah, and... yeah. Where, where do we draw the line here? Yeah, right? yeah. Because <laughs> it... there's the other annoying thing, right? There are experts on Tinder. Uh, TikTok, yeah, right. Yeah. You have these uh, dating experts, these you know, e legitimate experts. But mm. then there are other people who are just calling themselves experts. Yeah, I guess if you post a certain amount of videos, then you can call yourself one. <laughs> I don't think it matters on any credibility, really. No, I think it's just yeah. I think it's just in your head. You know, you can make whatever rule you want. Ten yes. videos, fifteen videos, doesn't matter the quality. <laughs> just so long as you once have... you hit double digits, <laughs> you are an expert. It's the one case where it is quantity over quality. Just yeah, uh, and that makes you qualified. Pump it out. Yeah, but there is uh, this one lady on TikTok named Kimberly, and she has got quite a big following for you know giving advice on the dating scene. But she has gone on to give a bunch of tips to say whether it's a red flag or not, uh, who you're on a date with, and whether you should be wary of them. Right. Okay. And she's pretty much given a set of, I guess, 
commandments to say these are the bad rules, you know, watch out for these things. But I have to tell the you, The holy Tom, red flags. Exactly right. The holy red flags. Look on, look on the, in the Bible of it because, I don't know, Tom, I'm looking at them now. They're, they're a bit obvious. Right. And this is where, you know, we joke about these dating experts that she's not really pushing the boundaries of, like, you know, any research. I feel no. they're just the same things that you or I would probably think about anyway. Yeah, okay. So what are, what are some of these signs to look out for? So the first one is they're super rude to uh, super w- rude to waiters and talk badly about other people, especially their ex. <laughs> and it's just like, I look at that and I think, what a given. If the man you are going on a date with has tied the shoelaces <laughs> together of the poor waiter carrying your spaghetti <laughs> yeah. and they trip over... Hands you a rusty <laughs> nail, put this in your food, we won't pay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that one seems like a pretty obvious one, but I'm not going to... I won't knock her yet, all right? I'll hold out that she might yeah. still be an expert. Well, I mean, yeah, c- keep in mind, think about these if you're on a date as well, you know, whether any of these are, you know, fine as two. Uh, someone said... She said uh, they don't respect your boundaries and they try to push you to stay out longer. So, you know, keep partying, keep drinking, doing yeah. all that. Yeah. yeah, okay, once again, wouldn't say that's an expert opinion, pretty obvious one. Uh, mm. I feel like most people could piece that together, but we we digress. Yes, there's a few more points. Number three is they're inconsistent. They'll show interest one minute, and then they'll be distracted looking at their phone the next. <laughs> See, I think this one is so obvious. If you're at a restaurant with someone, and you're having a decent chat, and then they start to fade away, yeah. they're looking at their crypto on their phone, or playing some uh, Candy Crush, <laughs> you know. Staring at the waiter. Yeah, yeah. You can't... I don't know. I, it is just so obvious, isn't it? Number four, they're super affectionate and shower you with compliments without actually knowing anything about you. Oh, that one's right. an interesting one. Yeah, okay. Because I feel like a lot of guys and stuff on dates will think it's a good thing to do the compliments straight off the bat, and I don't necessarily think that's a terrible thing either. Yeah, I will. I'm, I guess if you're like overcompensating. I could see how that could be a bit of a red flag. Like, yeah. uh... God, I love your shins. God, <laughs> look at those earlobes. Just all the things that you wouldn't expect. Oh, you have a lovely elbow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> War- warranted. That would be a bit weird. I mean, where did this... Where, where, how does she become an expert, this TikToker? Like, where'd she get her, you know, qualifications? Harvard? Harvard? Oh, yeah, literally. Just buy a diploma online. But the last one, Tom, number five, is they're really confrontational and challenge you a lot on your thoughts and beliefs unnecessarily can you imagine she's ordered some spaghetti guy's gone you don't want that you hate spaghetti don't order it challenging you on everything no shit that's a red flag (laughs)